All right, all right. I hear all of you Warlock mains out there. You're sick of playing solar. What if I told you that there's a Warlock build out there that has an insane amount of AoE ad clear, quick ability recharge, and is just insanely fun to play that isn't solar? Do you want to call lightning strikes down on all your enemies devastating the battlefield? If that sounds like your thing, stick around and find out about one of the best Stormcaller builds that I think everyone has been sleeping on. Hey everyone, I'm Rozeki, and welcome to my build guide for the Fellwinter's Helm Arc Warlock. We're trying something a little different this week with a build guide. I could show off the most meta-defining build possible, but everyone else has already done that. There's a ton of slept-on builds out there, and trying cool new builds is what Destiny is all about. So today, we're starting with our Arc Warlocks out there. But before we jump in, if you are new to the channel and enjoy the videos, don't forget to give the like button a little tap, and also subscribe to get videos like this one and more sent straight into your YouTube feed. Okay, okay, we can start talking about the build now. Arc Warlocks are always clowned on. Some people think it's the worst subclass you could pick on a Warlock. Some see a teammate cast Chaos Reach and insta-leave the activity. But there's a secret hiding behind all this. Arc Warlocks have just the right set of tools to cause huge amounts of AoE damage, jolting and weakening all enemies that dare to step too close. At the center of our build is our exotic helmet, Fellwinter's Helm. Fellwinter's Helm states that powered melee final blows create a burst of energy that weakens nearby targets. The area of effect on Fellwinter's perk is fairly large, and defeating stronger enemies will increase the radius even further. One single melee kill will cause every enemy nearby to become weakened, and because of this, they'll take an additional 30% damage from all sources. That's the same as Tractor Cannon debuff. But we're not just defeating a single enemy with our powered melee. We're also making this into an AoE powerhouse. Our melee attacks will defeat a ton of enemies nearby, and any fortunate enough to survive will be easy to pick off due to the weakened debuff applied to them. So how do we do this? Let's start with our subclass options. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. As you'll see soon, we have very high ability uptime with fast generation of ionic traces and orbs of power. So picking abilities that have a shorter cooldown will give us a very high uptime on them as well. For your super choice, you could pick either Storm Trance or Chaos Reach. Personally, Chaos Reach is the easy choice due to the lower cooldown and higher single target damage. Our AoE ad clear is already pretty solid as you'll see, so Storm Trance is not really necessary. For our class ability, I recommend Healing Rift. This build doesn't have much healing directly built in, so having the Healing Rift in a pinch is nice to have. Picking Empowering Rift is also fine if you would rather use it instead. Your grenade choice is ultimately up to you. Our build is not focused on using grenades, so whichever you like the best will fit in fine. Personally, I use Pulse Grenades since they seem to be the best overall pick for most content. Our melee is the bread and butter of the build. We want the highest uptime on our powered melee as we can, and we also want to generate as many ionic traces as possible. As you'll see next, applying Jolt to enemies is a great way to help us create ionic traces. Because of this, and the low cooldown on this melee, we'll be picking Chain Lightning. It has the lower cooldown, and every enemy hit will become jolted as well. Onto our arc aspects. Starting off, we'll be taking Electrostatic Mind. Electrostatic Mind is one of our ionic trace factories. Defeating an enemy with arc abilities or defeating jolted targets will spawn an ionic trace. Of course, since we'll be using our chain lightning melee to start our combo, we'll be getting arc ability kills. But for enemies that aren't initially killed, they will be affected by jolt, giving us a second chance to generate an ionic trace. For each ionic trace we collect, we will recover ability energy. The faster we generate these traces, the faster we can use our abilities. The second aspect we're taking is lightning surge. This will give us an alternative melee option. While sliding, we could activate our powered melee to blink forward, calling down lightning strikes that jolt nearby targets. This is a much stronger version of our chain lightning melee ability, while still counting as a powered melee for proccing Fellwinter's exotic perk. This lightning strike occurs in a circle around you, causing a ton of AoE damage. Our fragments are set up to help keep you alive, while also feeding back into our ionic trace and orb of power generation machine. Since our goal is to be up close and personal with enemies to melee them, we of course will be taking Spark of Resistance. Spark of Resistance gives us a huge 25% boost to our damage resistance, making it way easier to stay alive when surrounded by enemies. 
We'll be taking advantage of this to stay alive while rushing our opponents with our melee abilities. Spark of Ions is our next choice. Just like Electrostatic Mind, this fragment will create an Ionic Trace when defeating a Jolted Target. These two effects actually stack, so defeating a Jolted Target will create two Ionic Traces, one from Electrostatic Mind and an additional one from Spark of Ions. Our third required fragment is Spark of Amplitude. Rapidly defeating targets while amplified will create an Orb of Power. Through our AoE melee attacks and our weapon choices, we'll be creating a ton of multi-kills, which will in turn create orbs of power for us. Our final fragment is your choice, but I have some strong recommendations. I personally take Spark of Discharge, which gives our arc weapons a chance at creating more ionic traces upon killing an enemy. This fragment works very well with one of our possible weapon choices, which we'll get to soon. Other options for the slot are Beacons, allowing Arc Special Weapon Final Blows to create blinding explosions, or Volts, which amplifies you when performing a finisher. Finishers on strong enemies will also proc Felwinter's exotic perk. Each of these fragments can help the build in their own way, and your choice will be based on how you choose to play and what weapons you decide to take. Speaking of weapons, we have a lot of good choices. I'm going to start with our energy slot, since this is where we can find weapons with the best synergies for our build. Arc weapons are going to be the top choice in the slot. I would also recommend choosing a weapon that has access to the Volt Shot perk. Reloading a Volt Shot weapon after a kill will allow the weapon to jolt targets for a short period. This is a no-brainer choice, since defeating jolted targets will again create Ionic Traces for us. There are a few weapons that I think are best in slot for this build. If you want to go with a primary arc weapon, I can't recommend the Subjunctive Arc Submachine Gun more. With access to Threat Detector and Volt Shot, you should be able to proc and reproc Volt Shot very easily. Plus, Subjunctive is currently craftable and available from Season of the Wish activities, making it extremely easy to get your hands on. My favorite choice in the energy slot, though, is the new Undercurrent Arc Waveframe Grenade Launcher, available from the Vanguard playlist. It also has access to Volt Shot, and by being a special weapon, it can take advantage of Spark of Beacons to blind nearby enemies. The Adept version of this weapon is also available for those able to complete Grandmaster Nightfalls this season. My final energy slot recommendation is the exotic trace rifle, Cold Heart. Cold Heart is a great way to create ionic traces, and it also is able to take advantage of Spark of Beacons. Oh, and if you want to be a bit spicy, you could alternatively take a weapon with Repulsor Brace. You'll lose out on Volt Shot and Arc Weapon Synergies, but Repulsor Brace procs when killing enemies weakened by Fell Winter's Helm. Use this option if you need the extra survivability. Hollow Denial is a good choice for this, and is currently farmable when the Presage Exotic Mission is available in the weekly rotation. The Kinetic slot is where things get interesting. You can use this slot to fill out anti-champion requirements, or you can just use weapons you like here. But, I've got a unique recommendation. Here we have the exotic auto rifle from Crota's End, Necrochasm. At first, this may not make much sense, but Necrochasm has a big secret. Its exotic perk, Cursebringer, creates Cursed Thrall explosions when killing enemies with precision damage. These explosions count as arc damage, so it is able to take advantage of Spark of Discharge to create Ionic Traces as well. Plus, Necrochasm is just a great all-around weapon for most content. To cap off our build, we of course have armor mods. Here we're going to focus mostly on shoring up areas of the build that are lacking, or areas that we want to boost. Our main goal is to keep a high uptime on our chain lightning powered melee. For this, we'll be taking mods that generate orbs of power and mods that return melee energy. On our arms, we will be taking a copy of Heavy Handed to create orbs of power on melee kills and two copies of Melee Kickstart. In combination with the chest armor mod charged up, we can return between 30 and 40% of melee energy based on the number of armor charges we have. On our legs, we'll be taking a copy of Invigoration to return melee energy when picking up an Orb of Power, and either a copy of Stacks on Stacks to gain 2 armor charge for every orb collected, or Elemental Charge to gain armor charge when collecting an Ionic Trace. With the number of Ionic Traces we generate, this should activate fairly often. The rest of our mods help boost us in other areas. Our last leg armor mod is Recuperation, which provides us healing on orb pickup. This is important since we only have a few ways to heal ourselves from our subclass choices. On our head, we take two copies of Hands On to get super energy on melee kills, and a siphon mod to generate orbs of power on weapon kills. Finally, our class item is mostly up to personal preference. 
I like to take a copy of Reaper, Powerful Attraction, and Outreach. These mods will generate more orbs of power, and also give us a slight melee energy refund when casting our Rift. And to finish, I would recommend prioritizing your Resilience stat, followed by either Strength or Discipline. If you find that you are not refunding your powered melee enough, maxing Strength should help you be more consistent. Otherwise, Discipline will help to return your grenade more often. If you still have room for stat points on your armor, your final option is Recovery, and as it's the Warlock class stat, it's a solid choice, giving you higher uptime on your healing rift, as well as letting you recover your health faster while out of combat. To get you up and running quickly with this build, I've left a dim link in the video description down below that you could click to instantly apply this build to your character in-game. Let's talk about how to best play with this build. This is a highly aggressive build, focused on getting up close and personal with enemies. Playing far back and away from the fray is not the best way to make the most out of this build, as we need to be close enough to activate our AoE melee attacks. The strongest ability in our kit is our Lightning Surge melee. Remember that by taking this aspect, our powered melee is changed while sliding. Although Chain Lightning can do the job, Lightning Surge does way more damage and has a much larger area of effect. Not only this, but because Lightning Surge is a short blink, we can very easily get into the middle of a group of enemies to start our attack. Rush towards a cluster of enemies, then slide and melee to close the gap, unleashing Lightning Surge and our Fell Winter's Helm Weaken effect. Enemies that survive will be affected by Weaken. Weakened enemies are less likely to attack you, so you should be safe to clear out those that survived without having to worry too much about incoming damage. Keep in mind though that you are a glass cannon. You need to be confident enough to engage groups of enemies, but you also need to be mindful that you could easily die if you're not being careful. Sometimes it may be better to thin a group of enemies, especially on higher difficulty activities first with your weapons before rushing in headfirst. Mastering the art of when to rush in versus when to disengage is the key to mastering this build. All of this put together creates a build that could clear out tons of adds with powerful lightning strikes, leaving anything that remains weakened and easy to defeat. With the amount of ability regen in the form of Ionic Traces and Orbs of Power, you'll be constantly calling these lightning strikes to devastate your enemies. And above all else, this build is one of the most fun Arc Warlock builds I've tried to date, and I guarantee that you will fall in love with this build just like I have. Stormcallers being bad will forever be old news. If you try this build out or have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below, tweet at me over on Twitter, or ping me on our Discord server. I'll be looking forward to seeing what you think. I'll also be on the lookout for any builds you want to see in the future as well. If you liked the video or the build, don't forget to hit the like button, and of course, subscribe for more builds in the future, as well as our weekly Destiny 2 design videos. Oh, and last but not least, if you'd like to see a quick version of this video, we have a brand new one minute build guide up as well with a quick explanation of everything we went over in this video, if you need a refresher while playing. But that's all I've got for now. As always, I've been Rezeki, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.